Hello everyone, welcome to today's video, which is going to be a chatty end of the year, get ready with me. I uploaded a similar video around this same time last year and you all seemed to enjoy it. I basically just gave a recap of my year and just some personal stories and things that I have worked on this year. So hopefully this video will help you get to know me as a person a little bit better and not just someone who sits in front of a camera and talks about makeup. But before I get into this chatty get ready with me, I want to thank my sponsor for this video, which is Factor. I have been a Factor partner for more than a year now. And honestly, it's such a great partnership because I truly love my Factor meals. For those of you that are new to my channel and have no idea what Factor is, Factor is America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service. It is holiday time, we are all extremely busy. I know the last place I want to be is at the grocery store and Factor meals not only save me trips to the grocery store, but they save me all the time for meal prepping. I work from home and without my healthy Factor meals, I would probably be eating a handful of potato chips and maybe a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Factor meals help me to stay in line with my fitness and dietary goals. You can choose from 35 chef crafted meals every single week. There are calorie smart options, vegan and veggie options, protein plus options, and to prepare your factor meal, all you have to do is make your selection, take it out of the package, poke a few holes in the plastic, pop it in the microwave for two minutes, and there you go. Now you can enjoy a fresh flavor packed meal that's ready in just two minutes. So if you would like to treat yourself to high quality, delicious meals over the holidays, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code RISA50 to receive 50% off your first Factor box. All right, it is time to put on some makeup and chat. So let's see, 2023. Oh, I'm gonna zoom you in. Oh, I gotta put these a little farther back, I think. Um, all right, well, the year started off really great. I was in Paris for the very first time with my kids. I know I brought everything I needed, but... Oh, oh here's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna use this little concealer to prime my lids today because I am all out of eyeshadow primer. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> By the way, um, I am on pain medication. I've mentioned that in a couple of my comments to people when they've said, oh, you sound different. Or actually in one of my recent videos, somebody said that, like, they actually said, are you okay? You sound like, they said that I was slurring my speech. But then I had my mom listen to the video. I was like, mom, I got nervous. And I said, mom, can you watch my video? Even though she always watches my videos. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> I asked her, if she thought I was slurring my words. And she's like, no. She goes, you know what? You just kind of sound like um, how you are after a couple of drinks at a party. <laughs> a little bit more chatty. So if you've noticed that too, the reason why is because I am on pain meds. And that sort of brings me back to last year. Cause that's when like everything first happened. Oh, you know what I was gonna do? I was gonna try underpainting today for the first time. Maybe I shouldn't. No, we're going to. I'm gonna use this Dibs contour stick. So in December of last year, forgive me if you've already heard this story. I know some of you have because I've told it before because it kind of was, you know, a big thing in my life. I um, was putting my dog down, one of my dogs, Marnie, who I'll also talk about. She passed away in September, but we'll get to that. Um, she was very old and I had to um, always pick her up and put her down because she just had trouble walking. She couldn't really see well, she couldn't hear well. So anyway, one day at like 6 a.m. I took her out, I let her out to go use the, go potty. And when I was putting her down back in the house, I couldn't get up. I actually was on all fours. I sort of fell forward and could not get back up. So I called for my I called for my husband. By the way, I don't even know if I'm doing this underpainting right. <laughs> what was I thinking? Trying this for the first time. Um, 
So I called for my husband. Long story short, I ended up in the hospital and I was crying because I thought we were going to have to cancel our trip to Europe. I did not bring my glasses in here, so I don't know which Natasha Denona concealer I'm gonna use. I think I'm gonna use the darker, no, I'll use the lighter one. Um, so yeah, I thought we were gonna have to cancel our trip and it was just, <sighs> that is when the saga um, started basically. I really don't think I'm doing this right. Um, so I could not do everything that my husband and kids could do because of the pain. And I was on the same pain medication. A lot of you know of it. It's called gabapentin and it does make you a little like, I don't know, is the term loopy okay? This is really, really light. So I was on this medication then, I was going to physical therapy which I am now again, and um, then things got better, thankfully. Things improved, and I was a little bit better by the time I had my lash launch party, which was the end of January. That is when I launched my lashes with BK Beauty, and we held a party at my house. It was great. My friends came, my family came, and um, the lash launch was, according to BK Beauty, it was a it was a success. I mean, the thing with lashes is, obviously not everybody uses lashes. So right there, you're going to have, um, you know, it's gonna cut the people who are going to buy your product down. I mean, some people did buy the lashes just to support me, which I'm so grateful for. But then there were people, other people who just said, you know, I'm, I don't really wear lashes. And not only do I not wear lashes, I really don't wanna you know, spend that much on lashes. So what I did is I basically told myself I wasn't gonna have super high expectations. Like I knew they weren't going to sell out. I knew they weren't going to be as popular as you know, Angie's collaboration, her brush collaboration with them. Because yeah, a lot more people use brushes than lashes. But you know, according to Lisa and BK Beauty, they said that they were very, very happy with the launch. They're happy with the sales. So. I'm happy. And you know, it was interesting. I almost had a little bit of, what do you guys think? Can you even see the contour? I don't know. I had maybe some imposter syndrome. Like I just, I don't know. It just felt sort of unreal. Like this is mine. There's, my name is on this package. When they go to the website, they're gonna find me. Like I just, it was just so, surreal and it almost in hindsight it may have looked like I wasn't that excited about it but I was so excited about it but I just I couldn't believe what was happening to me and then since I'm really opening up to you I have to admit I was a little bit you know disappointed I mean I was very grateful let me back up I was very very grateful that some wonderful influencers used my lashes they praised my lashes I was just you know, over the moon when I would see influencers using them, when I would see you guys using them, of course. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Like, I'm gonna start to cry right now because it was just so amazing how many people, ugh, okay, Risa, you know, supported me. Um, but then there was this big influencer, big influencer um, that got the lashes and she was did a video where she was talking about like, you know, everything she had just gotten in PR and she had gotten some lashes, my lashes, and she had gotten some from Velour. And she basically like tossed mine. Like in the video, she was just like, oh, I got these from BK Beauty. And like sort of like fell. I don't know if she tossed them or they just fell, but she was like, oh, we're gonna use the Velour. So Lisa and I were like, oh. We were just so hoping she would use the, um, you know, the BK Beauty lashes, but she didn't. And um, you know. What are you gonna do? It is what it is. I am very happy with the lashes. I'm ecstatic for the success that BK Beauty has had in 2023, and I see only more great things for them, honestly. Because Lisa and Paul are not only smart business people, they're very kind, they treat people well, and I think that's what business is all about these days. You have to treat your people well, you have to appreciate them. I mean, things are changing in the world. Yeah, things are definitely changing in the world and in the workplace. This generation, they're not putting up with what we did back in the day. 
And I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. It's just different. And what I mean by that is I think there's something to be said for, you know, having a strong work ethic and, you know, showing your employer that you are, um, you know, you're, you're valued, not valued. Oh God, it's trouble with this medication is it just makes that brain fog so, so bad. I can't think of words. Um, you know, it shows that you, you know, you value your job and you want to be good at it. And, you know, but now it seems like people are realizing that a lot of businesses take advantage of their employees. What I think, you know, COVID taught a lot of us is that, um, you know, your home life is so important and we shouldn't, I mean, some people might disagree with this, but it's important, life is very short and we only get one chance, one go at this. So we shouldn't be living to work. Is that the quote? We're living to work, working to live. And I don't even know how I just got off on that tangent, but I was talking about um, BK Beauty and just all of their success and just how I think that that's the reason for their success. They have such amazing people working for them. They're, they're smart. And you know, when my sister and I had our store, Back in 2007, we had our, our um, makeup store in Minnesota. And my sister was like back of house. I was front of house, meaning she did all of the advertising, marketing, all that stuff, the, the money basically. And I chose the brands, I hired the people, the um, employees. And one of the things I kept saying to my sister was, we've got to pay them a good wage. You want good people, you have to pay a good wage. And I still believe that. Like the best people don't come cheap. I mean, of course businesses need to make money, but they will. If you have a great makeup artist, if you have a makeup boutique like we did, and you have a great makeup artist working and you know doing somebody's makeover, and we were the only game in town. I mean, there was no uh, this was in Rochester, Minnesota, home of the Mayo Clinic. And there, at the time, there was no Sephora. There was no Ulta. We were the only place for people who would, you know, come to Mayo for treatments and maybe they were going to be there for, you know, a couple of weeks and they just needed, uh, you know, some makeup, some shampoo, some skincare. We were the only place to go. So if we had someone come into the store and they wanted just a makeover to, you know, to make them feel better. Maybe they're going through some sort of treatment. Um, you know, if you have a great makeup artist who's friendly, and we did, we hired some really great um, girls. So when somebody came to the store and sat down and got a makeover and you know got to chat with somebody who was really nice, and they just had a great experience at the store, that's what we wanted. We wanted them to have a great experience. And they did, and they would buy like everything that the makeup artist put on them. So yeah, I firmly believe that treating your people well, well, treating all people well, let's face it. Can you guys even see what I'm doing? Am I even in like in frame? That is some matte full coverage. I'm sure some of you are like, Risa, that was a lot of powder. You put on a lot of powder, but you forget that I'm very, very oily and that I need powder even at my advanced age 50 but 50 isn't what it used to be we all know that i think i hope oh um where was i okay i think i need to move on oh yeah so let's move on from like january um then in february okay we're gonna take a turn here it's gonna get a little depressing <laughs> my grandma Okay, Risa, do not cry. Oh my gosh. Um, my grandma, who was in more of an assisted living type of place, not really a nursing home, she fell. She was 97 when this happened, or was she 96? I think she was 97. She had a fall. And then after that, she was basically, I don't want to say kicked out of where she was living. Maybe, maybe. My mom would my mom would say she was kicked out because you know they don't want to have any 
falls on their you know on their watch so they said that they just really couldn't care for her anymore and we had to put her into a memory care facility and after that she was never the same um so yeah that was pretty rough and then um we lost her in uh oh gosh the time is like all of her i think it was late april may no it was may it was late april nope it was early may so i went back to michigan for her funeral she was living here in vegas but she was buried next to my grandpa in Michigan. So I went there for the funeral and um, it was, it was rough. I mean, I, I know how lucky I am or was to have had her for so long. I mean, a lot of people, most people maybe don't have a living grandparent when they're 50. I had, well, I was 49, almost 50. But um, yeah, that was a huge loss. I still, you know, I it's still hard to believe, but um, she lived a very, very good life. She was surrounded by people that just loved her so much. And okay, okay, I'm gonna take a break for a second. I need a really, really close magnifying mirror for eyeliner. I think after doing this for so long, I would have it down, have recording videos down to a science, but I don't. But I love that you guys, some of you say that about me, that you like that I'm not really produced. I don't have tons of fancy editing, that it's just more real, I guess, more like old school YouTube which is good, which I'm glad because I am not very tech savvy, never have been. I'm surprised I have managed to get any sort of following on social media. So let's see, what happened in May? Oh, some good things that happened in May. Obviously, you know, it was my 50th birthday and my best friend from Michigan flew in She's kind of like a high roller at the Cosmopolitan here in Vegas. She comes like two or three times per year because she really likes to gamble and she really likes sports. So now there are sports here in Vegas. So, um, yeah, so for my birthday, she was staying with me, but we ended up staying one night, my birthday going out night at the Cosmo because her host, she had asked him if he could get us a car, like for us to get down to the strip because we had dinner reservations and we had, we were gonna go to, I got a table at this place called the Barbershop in the Cosmo. It's like a club, but not a club. The crowd's a little bit older. They have a live band. It's a much smaller venue. It's just definitely more of an adult kind of place to go in Vegas. I shouldn't say adult because 21 year olds are adults, but like older adults who don't want to go to a traditional nightclub. The barbershop is great. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, it was uh, the weekend of, I think EDC, the Electric Daisy Carnival. Anyway, all of the cars, he said he could not get us a car. He could get us a room. And he actually ended up getting us two rooms, like a big wraparound suite and then a connecting um, just basic room. Well, not basic room. I mean, it's a little step up from the basic. So it ended up being a ton of fun, except I accidentally, I say accidentally, but it was all my doing. My BFF Suzanne and I went to brunch my birthday morning, and we went to this place called Mimosas Gourmet. This is what the mimosas look like. There were only two of us, and I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking, oh, it's my birthday. We're just gonna down this thing, which we didn't, but I drank way too much. I honestly didn't think I was gonna make it to like head down to the Cosmo, which we were supposed to head down at like three in the afternoon, but I needed a nap. 
And then I took like a super cold shower to wake up because other, if I hadn't, I, I, I just, I would never have made it. So that day has a lot of regret. Well, let's say that morning, cause the night was fine, but the morning, a lot of regret. So we get down to the Cosmo and our, we had a dinner reservation at like seven or eight. Anyway, I had how many friends? I want to say there was like eight or nine of us. My husband was there too. He was the male tag along. Oh, because we had invited this other couple that we're friends with and um, his dad, my husband's good friend's dad was very ill at the time and he had like taken a turn for the worse so they couldn't come. So my husband was the only guy and yeah, so then we, after the um, dinner, we went to the room for a little bit and then I don't even remember what happened in the room, but we went down to the barbershop, sat at our table and basically just drank and closed the place down. It was so much fun. And then you want to hear something really funny? Well, not like funny haha, -ha, but funny interesting, I guess. When I was leaving, you know, the lights come up and um, everybody's, you know, they're ushering everybody out. And so we were leaving and this guy stops me and he says, did you and your party have a, a good time? And I said, yeah, we had a great time. Thank you. And he goes, oh, I'm the manager. He says, I follow you on TikTok. And I was like, really? He said, yeah. You know, anytime you, you know, you want to come back, just let me know. And I was like, great. And then... Yeah, I found him on TikTok and sure enough, and you're probably thinking, why in the heck is he following you on TikTok? Well, I had done over on TikTok a couple like Vegas related posts, I guess you could say, videos. I did like, um, you know, overrated and underrated restaurants in Vegas. I did, um, oh God, this cowlick, like what, what is this? I'm gonna fix that before I do the final look. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I'm telling you, it's the medication. It is the medication. Uh, yeah, so I had done a couple of Vegas related posts. So that's why it makes sense that he would follow me because he probably wants me to, or would like it if I, you know, mentioned the barbershop since he's the manager and I just did. I love it there. So that was great. My 50th birthday was definitely fun. I learned my lesson when it comes to mimosas. Less is more. Oh, this brush, this brush, this blush is brighter than I thought. I just got this. It's from Patrick Ta. It's called She's That Girl. I thought I owned all the Patrick Ta blushes, but I don't. There was one I was missing. And you know why I didn't get this originally or since they've been out is because if you go to Sephora and you look at the testers of this color, it looks horrible. This shade right here is white on the tester. Every Sephora I've been to, I was like, why is it white? And now I know, because this happened to me with the Valentino blushes, that they just get, um, you know, they just fade because they're under those lights in Sephora. But clearly that is not white. By the way, these are brushes from Singe Beauty, Angela, Angel, Angelica, Nic oh, I know her. I see her every couple of months. She comes to Vegas and I should really ask her just like how to truly pronounce her name. I just call her Angie, but Angelica Nyquist, the, the, Angel this is her. She is the creator of Singe Beauty brushes. So I will link her and her channel in the description box of this video. I talked about this Jason Wu palette in my best drugstore of the year video, drugstore products. Look at that. It is insane, this highlighter, and nobody talks about it. Nobody. Oh, it's so pretty. But you have to like a bold highlight. All right, so we've we've only gotten to May, the birthday, and we're almost done. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I guess let's, let's be a downer again and talk about September. Marnie, my little Shih Tzu, um, that we've had, we, we adopted her when she was four and she was gonna be 17 a couple days after, like a week, a week after she passed. So as I mentioned earlier, she had trouble walking. She was pretty much deaf, she was pretty much blind. And then just one day she stopped eating. She just didn't wanna eat. And we took her to the vet, obviously. They said that she was, you know, having like kidney failure and kidney failure. But what they wanted to do was to pump her with fluids for a day or two to see if they could get her kidneys working again. And um, they called us in. That, that was like a Friday. We went to go get her. And the prior previous day, when they had um, done the, the transfusion, like the, the fluids, they you know charged us they you know we paid and then we were expecting to pay again but they said they didn't like have us at the checkout station they said just you know come in come to the back so we knew something was wrong then and um hmm. so that is when they told us that um there was really not much more we could do that she was because she was so old that it wasn't, I guess, I don't wanna say worth, but he didn't think, the vet didn't think that we should put her through the only option that really was available to us because he said, you know, let's just keep her comfortable. Let's just, you know, show her love and... <sighs> okay, I need another break. That Monday morning, we could just, my son who basically grew up with her cause he was 10 when we got her and we had her for 11, 12 years. Yeah, so he had stayed up the night with her. Like we had, we had told him, I have something in my eye now, that we were probably going to put her down, that that was the most, you know, humane thing to do. And my son of course didn't want to, but that morning, he, after spending the night with her and hearing her labored breathing, and she had gotten down to like six pounds. She was skin and bones. And um, I said to my son that morning, you know, through tears, I said, we, we have to take her now. We have to do this now. We can't, you know, put her through anymore. So, um, yeah, so that was it. I do want to put a little bit of gloss on because I find them to be a little drying. I'm gonna wait till it dries a little bit more. So I'll put on the lashes first. So these are my day club. What did I do with the glue? Yeah, I like to make the lashes into like just little corner lashes. Or if you have my martini lashes, those are corner lashes. But I make these kind of even smaller. There's like one, two, three, four, five clusters. And everyone always asks me about the glue. This is my favorite glue. It is the Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive. I will have that in the description box. Um, so let's talk about something not sad <laughs> that won't make me start crying again. Um, mm, my YouTube channel. Things are going well. I mean, I did hire back in June a YouTube coach. Her name is Erica. You may have heard of her before. She's worked with a lot of YouTubers. Yeah, Erica Vieira. I did her one-on-one. -on -one. Not that my channel was struggling. It was just a little stagnant. And I was just feeling like my content was a little stale. Like I kept just regurgitating the same videos over and over and over. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to bring something new to you guys. I want to say that I feel like TikTok has just taken a lot of the mojo from us YouTubers. Maybe it's just me. Um, and what I mean by that is that TikTokers are the ones really getting all the attention these days, I guess you could say, like from brands, when it comes to PR and brand deals. They're really, they really seem to be focusing on TikTokers. And 
that's not, I mean, I post TikToks. I have a decent following there, but I haven't grown in probably a year. They changed their algorithm. It used to be a lot easier to grow on TikTok. Now it's almost impossible. So um, yeah, I don't really spend a lot of time there anymore. And that's something that Erica told me. She said, don't even like, don't even bother. But I kept saying, I feel like I do have to put a little bit of content over on TikTok because that's where the brands seem to be going these days. And um, anyway, Erica gave me some great ideas. She helps me with my thumbnails. She helps me with my titles. And she's brutally honest. I mean, she and I have had some, you know, disagreements, like when it comes to my thumbnails, I'll think like a thumbnail is great. And she'll say, no, I don't like it. Like, what is this about? Like, it colors bad. Like, she is brutal. But I mean, isn't that what a coach is for, really? All right, what gloss, what gloss? You know, these NARS glosses are so underrated. Look how beautiful this color is. I should probably check and see if it's even still available. Because you'll all probably get mad at me if it's not. All right, if it's not available, I will link something close. I love the formula of these glosses. They're just so light. They're not a thick, sticky gloss. This gloss is basically clear. It just has a little bit of shimmer. I'm sure there is a dupe somewhere. All right, I will be right back and we will close this out. All right, the look is complete. I am ready. Ready for what? I don't know. I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys and tell you how much I appreciate you all supporting me this year and every year to the people who just recently subscribed or subscribed in 2023, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I hope that the Resetas Makeup family continues to grow in the next year. If you like my videos, please share them, give them a thumbs up, comment. It really does help in the algorithm. I just appreciate every single one of you so much more than words can ever express. Okay, I'm done crying. I would like to thank Factor for sponsoring this video. And once again, I hope that I will be working with them in the coming year as well, because I do do love my Factor meals. And don't forget about the link and the promo code RESA50 to receive 50% off your first Factor box. Every product and shade name will be listed and linked down below in the description box as well. As always, if you are not subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will consider doing so. And that'll do it for this chatty get ready with me. I hope to see you all in my next video.